It doesn't get very deep, <laughs> but you're still in it. <laughs> and you can be happy or you can be sad. You can enjoy it or not. You're going to be in the military. You made a vow. You can be happy or you can be sad, but you're in it. This Christian walk, supposedly you made a public statement and trusted Christ. You can be happy or you can be sad. But let's see, let's see if we got a reason. Let's see if we got a reason to love Jesus Christ. Okay? Now the Bible tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. The Bible says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. So that's something we've all obtained. It's like precious. The same faith that took me to get to get me saved is the same faith that took to get that guy get that guy saved. It's no different. Same faith, okay? Same gospel. Nobody gets saved any differently from anybody else. There's only one way to get saved, okay? No one gets saved any differently. Then he says, "Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus." That's one problem. People don't have any knowledge of God. Okay, so it's kind of hard to grow with God, in God, should I say, with no knowledge of God. That's right. If you don't know anything about him, you can't grow. So being ignorant, is, is, there, there, is no, there is no joy, no benefit of being ignorant of the things of God. You'll never have any peace, you'll worry, and you'll be unstable. Because if you did know about God, you know he, you'd know he can give you a peace which surpasses all understanding. He would calm you, and you'd find out that Jesus Christ is your peace. You'd find out that Jesus Christ is your joy. You'd find out that, that God had taken care of some things, and you didn't even know about it. We're going to find out about that in just a second. So verse 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, Okay, that's something we're going to look at, okay? All things were given unto us that pertain unto life and godliness. Then the second thing, look at verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Now, what is it that has been done for me simply because Jesus loved me? I'm going to read off some things, okay? And the reason why I got to read them, because if I hit every verse, you'd be here a long, long time. Okay? You really would. But I just want to try to, I want to try to provoke you unto love. So if you trust Christ, and if you've wondered about God, and you wondered, well, how good is he? I'm going to read some things to you. And you think about this, and if you want to say amen, that's fine. But I'm just going to start reading. So I'm going to read things that pertain unto life and godliness, and those exceeding great and precious promises. Here we go. The Holy Spirit renews my soul day by day. My body is the temple of God and the Holy Spirit dwells in it. I can now serve the law of God with my mind. When I die, I will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Wherever Jesus is, so shall I, so shall I ever be. He will redeem my body. I will receive a glorified body just like Jesus. Only my works after salvation will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. The Lamb's book of life is not open when I'm judged. And I will be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. I will return with Jesus at his second coming. During the 1,000 year reign, the world will see just how much I love Jesus in this life by the rewards he will give me. I will be able to freely drink from the fountain or the water of life. God shall wipe away all my tears. Now here we go. The moment I was saved, I was forgiven of all my trespasses and sins. The moment I was saved, I was washed from my sins by the blood of Christ. The moment I was saved, I was justified by the blood of Christ. The moment I was saved, my soul was purified by the blood of Christ. The moment I was saved, I was purged of all my old sins by the blood of Christ. The moment I was saved, my conscience was purged from dead works to serve the living God by the blood of Christ. The moment I was saved, my soul was redeemed by the blood of Christ. The moment I was saved, my soul that was dead in trespasses and sins was quickened. 
The moment I was saved, I was born again. The moment I was saved, I passed from death unto life. The moment I was saved, my name was placed in the Lamb's book of life. The moment I was saved, my heart was circumcised by the Holy Spirit. The moment I was saved, the Holy Spirit began dwelling in me. The moment I was saved, I received the earnest of the Holy Spirit in my heart. The moment I was saved, I was given a comforter in the Holy Spirit. The moment I was saved, I was given the Holy Spirit to teach me all things. The moment I was saved, I was given the Holy Spirit to guide me into all truth. The moment I was saved, I was sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The moment I was saved, the Holy Spirit began to intercede for me in prayer. The moment I was saved, I was empowered by the Holy Spirit to be a witness for Jesus Christ. The moment I was saved, I was given spiritual gifts. The moment I was saved, Jesus became my intercessor with the Father. The moment I was saved, Jesus became my peace. The moment I was saved, I was delivered from the wrath of God through the death of his son. The moment I was saved, I was reconciled to God by the death of his son. The moment I was saved, I was freed from my sin by the death of the cross. The moment I was saved, my old man was crucified with Christ. The moment I was saved, I was crucified with Christ. The moment I was saved, I was delivered from the bondage of sin. The moment I was saved, I was no longer a child of the devil. The moment I was saved, I was delivered from the power of Satan. The moment I was saved, I was delivered from the power of darkness. The moment I was saved, I became a son of God. The moment I was saved, I became a joint heir with Jesus Christ and will inherit all things. The moment I was saved, I became a member of the body of Christ. The moment I was saved, Christ became mine and I became his. The moment I was, I was saved, I became a new creature in Christ. The moment I was saved, I became seated in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. The moment I was saved, I had a place prepared for me in heaven. The moment I was saved, I became part of the bride of Christ. The moment I was saved, God gave me eternal life that cannot be lost, stolen, sold, given away, modified, or taken away by cunning, extortion, force, nor will it ever expire. My soul shall never die. That's why I love it. And if you haven't thought about that, you got a problem. And that's why some aren't here today. Because they don't know how much his love did for us. And I could have went on and on and on and on and on. And then Bible verses for every last one of those. I'm just reading the Bible. Man, the moment I was saved, I was purged from my old sin. The moment I was saved, God became, he came to live inside of me. Now I got Jesus Christ himself pleading on my behalf. All because he loved me. Just because he loved me. And until you realize how much he loved you, you're not going to work for him. You know when a man cheats on his wife? When he stops loving her. Yeah, that's when he cheats on his wife. You know, a man cheats on God, he doesn't love him. You see, because your salvation doesn't mean you love God. I just want you to understand that. You being saved doesn't mean you got saved because you loved God. No, to love somebody, you got to know something about them. Yeah. See, I've been married a few years, and now I'm starting to really learn what love is. I thought I knew what love was. But, you know, over a decade and some change after that, I'm starting to learn what love is. Okay, so now I'm starting to love this woman. Now I'm starting to love my brothers. Now I'm starting to love my sisters in Christ. But that, that takes time for me. See, that takes time because I learned. But guess what? God knew all about you. So that's how he can love you. He didn't have to take time. Hmm, I got to learn about Andrew first. Let me, let me learn some things about him. Mm -mm. He knew all about him. He knew all his faults. He knew all his sins. He knew all his weaknesses. He said, but I love him. And I want to see him saved. So I think I'll give of myself for his happiness. He might not appreciate it, but at least, but at least I love him. He's got a chance. He's got a chance. So you need to think about that. Because if you can fall in love with Jesus Christ, there's so much more that can be done. So much more. My soul shall never die. Look at verse 5. Look at verse 5. Now, after, after, after doing all this, the Bible says, and beside this, <laughs> for God, that's just a small thing. And beside this, you know, you know, that's easy for me. Here's something I'd like you to do. Just give all diligence. Giving all diligence. And then he lists some things. And we're not going to get into that, but I'm just going to read through the verses because we're going somewhere. He lists some things. He said, and given all diligence, add to your faith. Now, your faith, you're saved by faith through grace. You got a big package deal. We just read that. You got that the moment you got saved. You probably didn't even know it. You probably didn't know all that. That's what salvation is. But through ignorance, we won't search the scriptures and find out what God has given us. But he said, just, here's, if you could do something for me, just 
to help you out, okay? Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Why? For, he says, okay, for